Well, good morning and welcome everyone to the Following the Way of the Cross broadcast. I am Pastor Byron, and we thank you so much for joining us this morning. And we're coming at you live this Wednesday morning. Is that correct? Yes, I, I believe it is Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to be uh, dealing with Romans seven nineteen this morning and seven twenty, and uh, it's going to be a great study in the Lord. So stay tuned want to give everybody an opportunity to come on out to Crossline Ministries. If you live in the Houston, Texas area, our address here is 26434 Lexington Road, Spring, Texas, 77373. And if you live anywhere near the Houston or surrounding areas, I'm going to tell you, you can't drive too far for the truth, ladies and gentlemen. You need to come on out and be a part of what God is doing here. If you live in the Houston area and you know that you have a cross-preaching church here, it's not time to sit home. Uh, it's not pleasing to God when you sit home and you got a cross-preaching church and you're home watching the live stream. Listen, you need to come be a part and be in the service and be with believers here. Amen? Amen. And uh, you're missing <laughs> out. I tell you what, every time you decide to stay home, you're missing out. So we just invite you and encourage you to come on out and be edified by the preaching of the cross. For it is the preaching of the cross, the Bible says, that is the power of God. And um, so we're going to lift up nothing but Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary. Because how many know today that's the only thing that can help you, ladies and gentlemen? That's the only thing that can help the believer live in a, a victorious, abundant life in Christ. And that's Amen. what he died to give us. So... Um, Heather, any other announcements you can think of today? I know we've got the uh, the study guide almost complete. Uh, we have, uh, in case you're just tuning in, we, uh, we've we got a new study guide out. We actually, this will be our fourth study guide. And um, <clears throat> this one is called The Doctrine of Total Depravity, which most probably I should have written first, but uh, it kind of slipped my mind. Uh, it was just something that was brought to my attention later, and the Lord really <laughs> laid it strongly on my heart to write on this subject. Uh, without understanding the doctrine of total depravity, you can't possibly learn this message properly. Um, you will never be able to, I'll take that a step further, you'll never be able to live an, a victorious, abundant life in Christ till you first realize your total fallen, depraving state of nature. And um, that's what is being talked about. It's, a, it's about, a, I don't know, a 30-page study guide or so. And it goes into great detail uh, about this great doctrine of total depravity. So uh, it's, it's ready. It's out. Um, it's, uh, we're going to be getting it into print today, I believe, hopefully. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife happens to be the graphic designer and editor of the book. I write it. She gra she edits it and she uh, designs it. So uh, that's kind of why I was looking at her. If you're in radio, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for the most part, I think I should have it ready uh, for print today, given that everything goes well. So awesome. Uh, we'll have that um, ready, and for when we go to Ohio. Um, yes. Coming up in what three weeks or so? Yeah, two three weeks. Yeah. We're um, we're we're going to bring some of those with us. So if you live in the Ohio area, and you would um, you want to wait three weeks, uh, then yeah. um, we can bring some up there. Otherwise, uh, you can go ahead and I haven't put it on the website yet, um, but uh, if I get a chance today, I'm going to go ahead and try to put a link on the website so that you can pre-order those if you would like. Absolutely, and I'll, I'll say this, you know, <laughs> yesterday we dealt with uh, the subject of spiritual laws, and we also have a study guide on spiritual laws. We also have a study guide on what we are teaching today, uh, which is Romans 6, 7, and 8. We're in Romans chapter 7, and uh, we also have a study guide on justification by faith, and all of these I'm going to tell you, they'll add to your knowledge of the message of the cross. They'll bless you because they are the word of God. Amen. And um, the word of God will bless you when you understand it properly. <laughs> <Excuse me>. um, <clears throat> God's word will not return void, ladies and gentlemen. So we just encourage you uh, to get these. Now, the, uh, I'll say this. I mentioned this yesterday, but if, if you're in a place where you just can't afford one, uh, we will be more than happy to send you one. Just send us your address. 
and uh, mailing instructions there and we'll send that out to you um, for those of you that that want one the way to get one is you go to www.crosslinetv.com www.crosslinetv.com and you can pick one up there there is a products tab over on the right side I believe of the website and uh, it'll take you there. Now, I don't think we have the link up for total depravity yet, do we? That's what I just got through okay. mentioning. Okay, gotcha. Is that I, I haven't gotten it up yet, but hopefully I'll be able to uh, get that up today or tomorrow. Okay. For people to pre-order theirs. And if my wife sneezes for the next hour, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> just uh, bear with her. She's got some, <laughs> she's got some allergies working this yeah, morning. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Uh, so let's go get into the word this morning, Mama, if you will take us to prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> we thank you for Praise you. giving us this opportunity thank to not you, only be Lord. able to share in your word, but to be able Help to fellowship morning, with Jesus. you, to sit and learn of you, Lord. It's not just a broadcast, and it's not just us with the Robert and Heather show, Lord, that this is, this is us coming back humbly before you and just asking that you would teach Help us, us Lord. that you would lead Jesus, us, Lord, yes. that you would minister to our hearts, that you would change our minds, Lord God, that we might I think the way praise. that you do. You said that your thoughts are higher than our thoughts and, oh, and your ways are higher than our ways. And, and we're just, we're yielding these vessels to you and asking you to use them for praise your glory, Lord. Lord that you would minister and that you would speak and that we would fellowship once again. We praise amen. you and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Romans seven nineteen uh, is where we're going to begin this morning. And Heather, do you mind reading that there? Romans seven nineteen. <laughs> I like that you're making me do this one I don't because mind. this I'll one's kind. No, no, no. It's just it's funny. It's like okay. a tongue twister. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. So yeah, that is a tongue twister. Say that five times fast. Say that fast. five <laughs> times fast is right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, really, uh, what Paul is saying <clears throat> here, he's saying that no matter how hard he tried in his Christian experience, no matter how good he th he thought he was doing. Um, he was still failing. He could not live up to the moral standard of the law, so to speak. And the divine nature, as Paul is writing this, it was in him. Uh, whenever we're born again, Paul was not an unsaved person when he wrote Romans 7. He was not an unsaved person when he wrote Romans, period. Amen. He was a saved person. And God was giving him this truth, this great truth, uh, but Paul went through a time and a period in his life, just like we as believers all have to do as well, to where we are not completely understanding God's salvation plan yet, his redemption plan. And we go to that place to where a lot of us start out. We're starting out. Uh, we start out on a mountaintop usually, and God is just blessing us and blessing us. And um, usually it's not long after that that we pick up a rule, we pick up a law. In today's modern society today, men are making up rules, they're making up laws, they're making up traditions, regulations. They're putting a yoke upon God's people that they were never able to bear. That's why the <coughs> failure comes is when we put ourselves under the moral law, the standard of God's righteousness. When we put ourselves under that thing, um, we're going to fail, just like the Apostle Paul failed. So this is really what he's saying here. He's saying, for the good that I would, I'm not doing it. He's saying, I wanted to do good, but I'm not doing it. Why? Because he was not able to, because he was under the wrong covenant. He was still living out his Christian experience according to what he had been taught, according to what he had been taught in Judaism. He was still trying to live for God, operating. He was really operating in the law of his mind, Heather. We talked about the spiritual laws yesterday. We talked about the fact that a person that is operating in the law of their mind, the law of the mind uses the willpower. It uses the flesh. It uses flesh and blood. It uses strength. It uses 
its own power source. So we got to understand today, ladies and gentlemen, that the law of the mind, which is weaker than the law of sin, whenever we put ourselves under law, that those spiritual laws that were devised by God in eternity past are going to govern our behavior. They're going to govern our behavior, ladies and gentlemen. Understand there's no way of escape from that. You cannot escape the spiritual laws from dominating you. They're going to rule you at some point. Now listen, if you are operating under a system of religious activity, religious rules, whatever it might you might have made up in your head or the church makes up, so on and so forth, you are going to try to use the law of your mind, which is your willpower, which is your flesh, to please the Lord. And see, we all want to please the Lord when we're born again. Why? Because the law of God has now been placed in our hearts. <coughs> we see this over in the book of Jeremiah. He wrote the law of God in our hearts, Heather. Mm -hmm. And the, when the divine nature comes in, so does God's moral law come in. And when God's moral law comes in, the divine nature wants to please God's moral law. It wants to attempt to keep God's moral law. That is every uh, human being's default position that we run to. And when we do that, ladies and gentlemen, understand that we are going to wind up failing the Lord each and every time. Heather? You know, something I was going to say when you were talking about lawmaking, um, the scripture that came to mind was Romans 10 and 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Um, you know, if that we, we write these study guides not to sell product but to provide the understanding so that people aren't ignorant of what God's righteousness is. The reason why um, any of us fall prey to the lie of the enemy that we would need to follow a rule or a law or a regiment to live for God is because we're ignorant of what it is he's done. Right. And if you can be equipped with the, under the knowledge and then God gives you the understanding of what it is that he has done, then you're not, you see, see where I'm going? You're not going to fall into that. I think every one of us has to have that Romans 7 experience to yeah. put it in balance. Um, well, I think you know, each and every one of us will, will automatically go. That's our proclivity, but um, I'll, I'll say it's this. not his will. You know, I, I, was, I, was, I was taught the wrong thing uh, <clears throat> for the first eight years of my Christian experience. I, I mean, I was saved. Yeah, I was saved, but I was living miserably saved because this truth that I now have today praise the Lord, was not given to me. I don't take the truth for granted. I'm, I'm so thankful that the Lord, you know, has given us that. We're not boasting in that fact. But we understand that I was living a miserable Christian experience, ladies and gentlemen, for a long time. If this truth would have been given to me from the beginning, I would be nine times further down the road than I am now. Why? Because this is the, this is the introduction that every believer needs when they're born again. You see, the law brung them to Christ, brought, uh -huh. brought them to Christ. The law brought them there and understand that because it brought us there, then it's no more needed. Okay, then the Holy Spirit comes in and he begins to do the work. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And we understand now that we've been given the right gospel. We know how to live for God properly. I need to know how to live for God today. I didn't need to know uh, how to celebrate festivals or how to learn uh, how to uh, keep the Passover Seder and all the such things that were taught to us um, back then. Understanding this, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not in a church that's preaching this message, that's preaching the cross of Christ and teaching you the doctrines that go along through the book of Romans that the Apostle Paul taught us, then you need to run from that church. And you need to find somewhere that's giving you the meat of the message. Because don't tell me that you'll <laughs> sit under that stuff and you'll not receive it. Don't tell me. Listen, whatever you sit under, 
is you either just play in charts or you could, or you're believing it. One of the two. So don't tell me that you're not going to sit under somebody and not pick up what they're teaching you. Uh, it's just not possible. I, um, I had a friend the other day on Facebook from uh, high school post on social media and say, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. And then somebody else, one of her friends, had said, I know you can. I know you can. I know you can. And then I popped in there and I said, the funny thing is, is when we finally admit that we can't, that's when God gets involved. I didn't get a whole lot of amens or quotes, likes on my comment. But the reason I brought that up is because, like, as for Nathan, our son, raising him up in this message, um, the majority of his life, he's, we've known this message. Not all of it, but a good part of it. And uh, as he's growing up, one of the important things that we are trying to teach him is, son, you can't do it. You can't do anything without the Lord's help. And trying to lead him to the source for that. So when you said that the, the total depravity study guide is one that you should have written first, um, probably the reason we didn't write it first is because we didn't have knowledge of it first. Right. Uh, you know, we've had to grow in that. In the failing, had to realize uh, it, something you said in the, in the book um, as, I was, as I was editing it this week is you said when we'll agree with what God's Word says. Right. That's important, you know, if the Lord, if the word of the Lord says you can't do it, um, says that, that your best efforts are evil, uh, then, then we've got to come to the place where each of us has to uh, accept that and agree with it. He can't help you until you do. Well, you, you, exactly. You've got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that you, the Bible says we're fallen. And you see, man doesn't want to accept that. He doesn't want to admit that. He doesn't want to admit that. We, right. we have the problem of self at hand, and self is always How constantly <laughs> trying to show everyone else How great the, the greatness of themselves. <laughs> and um, I'm just you know putting it in my terminology, but right. that's the truth. That's what self does. It wants to show everybody else how great I am. And, and we've got to come to the fact and believe what the Bible says about us, that we're messed up, we're fallen, there's none good, no, not one, there's none righteous. No, we have no all one. missed the mark. We have Amen. all fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. And um, we've got to have the divine nature's help, the power of the Holy Spirit. And the only way to have that, and again, going back to spiritual laws, as we talked about yesterday, the spiritual laws teach us that God can only, did you catch that, can only operate one way. And he only operates through what Jesus did, faith in what Jesus did at the cross of Calvary. So faith in what you do, God rejects. Faith in anything you have drummed up in your own mind, God rejects. Anything other than the finished work of Christ Paul would say that is another gospel, another Jesus, and God has to reject that as it regards his help in your life. And grace is what we need. We need more grace in our life. Uh, I don't need another 12-step program. I don't need another 40 steps of purpose. Listen, if you got any of those books, throw them away. They're not worth the paper they're written on. Understand this morning that you can only operate through the confines of the finished work of the cross of Calvary, that and that alone, faith in that finished work is going to help you. And it's exclusive faith. Don't think that you're going to have perpetual victory, a constant flow, if you're not trusting in him exclusively. I know that when we're giving all to God, when we're laying everything at the foot of the cross, then that victory will continue to flow. And that's what's hard for us to learn. You know, you and I were talking yesterday in the truck, and I was, I was telling you that um, what comes to mind right now is that the Purpose Driven Life book, I was barely saved when someone gave this to me. I was a brand new Christian. Obviously, I did not know the message of the cross. I was not Holy Ghost filled at the time either. Um, so for me, I, I, began, I, sat, you know, I sat down and I began reading it. And one of the first things that Rick Warren in his book says is the first thing you need to know is that it's not about you. 
And what I was discussing with my husband yesterday is I said, you know, um, just saying that, see, he, he's not teaching total depravity because if he were and he understood what total depravity is, and I'm not knocking Rick Warren, um, knocking but the doctrine. I'm definitely knocking what he's teaching because he's saying the first thing you need to know is that it's not about you. Uh, but if he understood total depravity, then he wouldn't be making up this 40 days of purpose thing. Um, saying you can do it if you'll do this, if you'll do that. And back to the scripture we began with in verse 19 of Romans 7. For the good that I would do, see now I can't say it. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. D explains depravity right there. It, that's why we're talking so much about he, it today. He didn't, he didn't want to do the evil he was doing. He mm -hmm. didn't want to commit that because he had been born again. He's trying to please the law of God by the efforts of the flesh. And that's what believers do and, unless they're explained. They have the processes in their mind. You know, having a head knowledge is a great benefit. It will keep you going the wrong, from keep you going from the wrong way at times. But really the heart knowledge and what we call the heart knowledge is, is that which the Lord gives you. Uh, through the through the tests, through the trials, through the tribulations, to the coming to the end of yourself. Through understanding that only He can give. Through the understanding that only He He can give. Uh, <clears throat> Galatians five and seventeen it says, "For the flesh lusteth against the spirit." You know, it, it seems like every time I turn around, I'm reading this scripture here lately. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these two are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would same thing paul is saying here he wanted to do good, good but he could not do it and until you learn you cannot do it without the lord's help you're going to continue on and you're going to keep trying to produce something that you can't produce until you learn that you can't do it and people are ignorant of these truths today, Heather. Right. They're, you say something like this, and they look at you, deer in the headlight, confusion. They have no idea what you're talking about. People are ignorant of these truths found in Romans 6 through 8. Um, the, you listen, most of the scholars I've read behind, they don't, don't talk even, about any of They this. don't even touch Romans 6, 7, and 8 because mm -hmm. they don't uh, properly understand it, I think, and they, and they realize that. Well, maybe they don't. But some of them have given things, a lot of them have given things, but it's wrong. It, it's, it's wrong. It's dead wrong. Listen, Paul was writing in a spiritual realm here. He was writing from the viewpoint of God's mind, really, when he was writing these things, if I can say it that way. In the mind of God, when you were born again, God sees you as taken up out of the old body of Adam and placed down into the new body of Christ. And then he's seen that old man crucified at that point. He took that old man to the cross at that point. That's the way God sees it. And then you were buried with Christ. You were resurrected with Christ in the newness of life. And see, that's the process. Is you can look, you can tell somebody that. And man, every time that we have somebody new that we mention this to, or maybe somebody's tuning in on the broadcast, they look at me like the deer in the headlights. So that a lot of we're we're ignorant of these truths today because the message of the cross has been something that's been lost to the church. And it's time for these doctrines to get back into the minds of Christians so that they can walk in victory and stop allowing the, the sin nature to govern their life. Amen. You know, something else that's extremely important, and we talk about this all the time, but repetition, other than the Holy Spirit, is sometimes one of our greatest teachers. You know, um, hearing it repeated, even in different ways, is, um, you know, depravity has got to be, and I wouldn't say step one, step two, but it's got to be one of the first places that we really start learning this message. Because until you understand depravity, then justification, um, you don't understand why you're justified. Because in your mind, if you don't understand you're totally depraved, you think you're already justified by your own works. So depravity is really a great starting place for anyone um, that's wanting to start learning this message. And, uh, 
you know, because then when you get to where the fact that you're justified, I mean, Paul lays it out so perfectly. And the Holy Spirit did that. Um, he's the one with the thoughts that are higher than our thoughts. He's the one that, that uh, actually penned this is the Lord. Um, but I love how Paul hits it from so many different angles. And if we understood, like the scripture I said a few minutes ago about Romans 10 and 3, if we understood what God's righteousness is and how that is given to us, then we would stop trying to achieve it on our own. We That's keep right. trying to produce in and of ourselves what it is the Lord has already provided right. so graciously to us. And it is a slap in the face and it is um, adultery for us to try to achieve now, that and produce that on our own. Now think about that. Think about the price Jesus paid for us so we could have his power in exchange for our surrender. Um, surrendering, dying to self. This is why Jesus said, if any man come after me, he must first deny himself, meaning deny his own willpower, strength, intellect, wisdom, whatever. Okay, Th listen, think about that. Whenever God has made something available to you and ignorantly you are going, okay, well, I can do this. And then God says, okay, when you say that, now I have to cut the power source off. Whenever you say you can do it, the power source is going to get cut off like a faucet. It's just going to get turned off. And think about the slap in the face that is. It would be like your father at Christmas time. Maybe you're five years old when you usually get the best Christmas gifts. I'm just putting an example out here. But you get a, a good Christmas gift and you say to your father, I don't need that. Now, how's that going to make him feel? Knowing the price that he paid to give you that gift. Now, think about what I'm saying. Understand, listen, we can't, we can't do this thing on our own strength, own willpower. Willpower is the enemy of God. Listen, we have to learn. This is why total depravity, as Heather mentioned a while ago, is so very important. The sin nature is going to continue to rule you. It's going to continue to govern you, to control you if you are operating under the confines of the old covenant amen, amen somebody said that's the truth right there so we've got to realize that flesh and blood is no match for the sin nature because the law gives strength the bible says the law when we keep law it's giving strength it's giving life to the sin nature if you will it's pumping in life it's pumping in energy to the sin nature and God is constantly saying, no, surrender and go my way and I'll reverse the pump and I'll cut the other one off and I'll pour my spirit on you constantly as long as you continue to trust in me. And really we go about this the hard way. And this might be a horrible example. And if it is and it doesn't come out right, I'm sure everybody's gonna laugh and my husband will probably make fun of me. But you know, uh, you and I being married, mm. um, you know, in a marriage, being fruitful. I apologize ahead of time. Is and having children, right? <laughs> That's a sign of fruitfulness. Now, what if I wanted to get pregnant and I instead, and, you're, and you have no problems with that, right? Right. You are fully equipped for that. And I go elsewhere, like say, a, 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 get inseminated, that kind of thing. If I went elsewhere to a different source for that, rather than coming to you, and just having our relationship. Wouldn't that be offensive? Don't laugh at me. I, Wouldn't that be offensive I, though? Okay. He's, he's intimately provided, <clears throat> what I'm saying is, is he's intimately provided a way for fruitfulness. Um, and it's naturally laid out in what it is that he has done for us. That's intimacy. In, in Revelation, don't you laugh at me. I, I'll go in on. Revelation, <laughs> he says, depart from me, you who work iniquity. I never right. 
knew you, it, it, like Adam really, knew Eve it, knew you. It really is a good analogy because Thank you. The, the thing about Thank it you. is, you ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we, when we're ignorant of these truths. But see how that's the hard way to go? It is the hard way and to go. And it's offensive and it's ridiculous. Offensive. Well, we have to be, um, the problem is the teaching in the modern church, number one, I would say. I mean, because well, they're teaching, what, they're teaching, go to the sperm bank. That's what they're teaching. Well, no, 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 no. Yeah, I, I'm, they're I'm teaching talking, go a different way. Yeah, they're teaching you to go a different way. Today, what you will hear across most pulpits, and I'm going to say 99% of them, uh, what you will hear is you will hear a message um, of psychology, something that is is teaching Some you another way. Another way. Just be good to your wife. Just be good. Just, Love. just. It, it puts the the bondage upon the person. The the person hearing the message. Right. And what we're trying to do is biblically teach you the truth of God's word. And the truth is, we can't do it without the power of the Holy Spirit. We've talked about this before, but I feel the need to say it again. Is that. When you sit under a, a, a ministry, when you turn on John Hagee, um, Perry Stone, some of these other guys, uh, Kenneth Copeland, I'm just naming names, uh, not to attack them, but what they're teaching. When they're giving you any other means than what Christ has done, they are taking you outside of the confines of what God can work in. Um, if I went elsewhere to have a baby, my husband would be offended. And he is offended and will not work in that. What they're teaching you is law. Now, people have the wrong mindset about what law is. Um, they're teaching you you can do it. That is law. They're well, teaching you that you have to achieve it on your own. That is law. And what they're putting you in is bondage. And if you are listening to our broadcast and you've listened to us for a while or you're beginning to understand the message of the cross, you need to stop listening to those other folks. Not Heather, because what? I, I, I spend an hour, and I'm going to turn this a little bit different way. Okay. But, you know, we spend an hour in the mornings um, preparing for this lesson and then we spend an hour bringing this lesson to you. I watched a 30-minute message just because I was bored yesterday. I don't ever watch TV, but I, I was shocked. It. I, I flipped. I, shocked. I flipped over on John Hagee's uh, hour or whatever, or 30-minute. He has a 30-minute slot there. And, and I said, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and if you don't know who John Hagee is, I'm sure most everybody does. But John Hagee had this 30 hours, 30-minute uh, spot where he was, his set was set up there in uh, Israel. Israel or the Valley of Megiddo, close to that nature Megiddo. where all the wars are going on. And he positioned himself. <coughs> and for 30 minutes, I listened to him talk about Bible prophecy and, and giving us his idea his of, opinion. Of, of uh, opinion of what's going to happen and and how great Israel is and, and, and all this stuff that was and I listened to it and I'll, I'll admit it was very intriguing you see it was very interesting to listen to but here's the problem with that did not the Apostle Paul say we preach Christ crucified and for that 30 minute spot ladies and gentlemen nobody got the gospel nobody got the gospel what a waste of time and money and effort listen I just explained to you that we spend an hour preparing and then we spend an hour bringing you this broadcast every day understand ladies and gentlemen that was 30 minutes and nobody got the gospel. And what you are getting here for a solid hour is the true meat of the gospel, which is the gospel Paul preached, which is the gospel every man should preach. Don't tell me that you are called of God and you're not preaching the gospel Paul preached. I'm sorry, you're not called of God if you're not preaching the gospel Paul preached. Well, and, and here's, here's the issue with that. And again, <clears throat> we're not attacking the man or his ministry, but what it is that he is teaching and preaching is when you turned the TV off, 
the first thing popped in my mind was, did that really help anybody? If, if somebody needs salvation or somebody needs to know how to live for God, what knowledge does is puff up. So it's great to understand. We're not saying don't learn Bible prophecy, but what we're saying is understanding Bible prophecy is fine, but it's not going to help you live for God. It's not going to get anybody saved. I want to stop That's you right there. Nobody's going to get Listen, set free in that. Hold it. What, ask yourselves this question. It's really simple. What part of prophecy helps you live for God? That's what I'm that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> what part of prophecy helps you in your walk? live victorious for God? Not one bit. So for 30 minutes, that was a waste of time and effort to me. Money. Because what if someone who was on drugs or was strung out and man, maybe they had a gun in their lap and this was the last call and they decided I'm gonna give God a chance. And here he is on there on the air preaching about prophecy and this man did not get the hope that's within all of us that are born again he did not get the gospel this is why paul strictly always through all of his epistles ladies and gentlemen now you're either living the biblical example or you're not you're either preaching the biblical example or you're not so that whole time we're over here preaching prophecy and this man with the gun in his hands going, well, man, this ain't really helping me much. And you see, this is why Paul said we preach Christ crucified. And he said, I'm determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Understanding this, if you've got somebody that's telling you the truth every day, boy, that's precious. That's worth more than gold. I wish I would have had it. Yeah, I, because what we had was much of what we heard yesterday in that 30-minute block. And um, it didn't help us. Again, knowledge puffs up. It gave us knowledge, but we didn't know how to live for God. And we almost gave up on God because of our failings and because um, we didn't realize we couldn't do it. Understand how important it is for you to live for God now. I said, now today, in this day, this dispensation of time we're in, we need to know how to live for God today. Now, if we were under the old covenant, the rules change. Christ hadn't come yet. Although the rules were the same by faith. Abraham was justified before the law was even given. We know that. He was justified because he believed God by faith. So understand, listen, today, ladies and gentlemen, we got to know how to live for God. Now that we have this new covenant plan, the book of Romans, Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8. These are the three most important chapters in your Bible as it regards a Christian and his walk with God. So we said all that about John Hagee and understand, let me repeat myself because people, I get emails all the time, uh, people battering me. We're not attacking the per the person himself, We're John Hagee. His name so We're know. using his name because Paul said, "Mark them which cause divisions, I'm contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them." Right. So we are marking John Hagee as a false teacher. Why? Because he's not preaching the cross. If they're not preaching the cross, you can label them as a false teacher, false preacher, what have you. They're not called of God if they're not teaching the cross. Now, some people may have started out right. They may have started out preaching all that they knew. There's probably a lot of them today that are preaching all that they know, but they haven't found this truth yet. And this is why it's so important to get behind ministries like this like Crossline TV, CTN, ministries like SBN, understand and support that work that God is raising up. And so we can get this gospel. It's so important, ladies and gentlemen. And when we're reading Bible prophecy or whatever, if it's not in light of the cross, anything in this word, if it is not in light of what Christ has done at the cross, it is um, not going to help you. And it's not the, God had one purpose when he, when he penned this through all of the different writers, the Holy Spirit had one purpose, and that was to glorify and lift up what it is that Christ was going to do or had done at the cross. And so if we read this word and it's not in light of what Christ has done, we have the wrong interpretation. And the Bible says that there's 
It's not for any private interpretation, meaning he has one. 99 different people read the same exact scripture. It's not 99 different meanings based on what they think. He had one meaning and one purpose, and it was, again, to glorify what Christ had done at the cross, to speak of what was done or what was going to be done at the cross. Right. Absolutely. We better go on to verse 20 here just to... Run out of time? Before we run out okay. of time. Um, Paul says in the next verse, we're in Romans seven twenty. if you are just joining us. He says, now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. He says here, if I'm doing the things that I would not normally do, it is no more I that are doing them, but the indwelling sinful nature. He says, I am not wishing for, I am not in the practice of this, you see, ladies and gentlemen, because it was the sin nature that was controlling him. Listen, if you think you're smarter than the sin nature or God, you have a issue there. There is a problem. You need to understand that the sin nature will reign upon you like a king on the throne until you are converted and your faith gets anchored in the cross of Christ. The sin nature will have total rule over your life. And um, understanding, if you're, if you're maybe listening to this today and you're an unsaved person, the sin nature is going to dominate you. You might think you're pretty good, old boy, but listen, the sin nature is dominating you. It's going to continue to dominate you until you get real with Christ, until you get sincere about knowing him, having a hunger for him. Um, that is the qualifications for being born again. I remember giving my heart, or thought I gave my heart, to the Lord in eighth grade. It was just a walk. It was a confession. Your confession won't even save you, although that's a good thing. We see it in Scripture. Understand, but I did that. My confession in eighth grade did not work. Why did it not work? Because my heart was not there. God knows the heart. Understand. God knows the heart. We can't fool him. <clears throat> so Paul is saying it is no more I that do it, but it's sin that's dwelling in me. And this teaches us really that every believer, we all have a sin nature. You, there's no way. Every one of us were born into sin. I think we understand that. Um, the Greek word dwelleth here, it means to occupy as a house. It means to reside or it means to remain. So the sinful nature, once again, it will remain in the believer. It will remain in the believer until the rapture of the church or the resurrection of the dead. It's going to be there. It's remaining, but it lies dormant. Understand. You see, once your faith is in Calvary, it lies dormant. It has no more power over you as long as your faith stays there. But once again, when we pick up a rule, when we pick up a law, what happens is, ladies and gentlemen, is the sin nature begins to revive. And we covered that back about eight verses ago, Heather. He, again, <clears throat> I love how systematically and, and in detail that he approaches explaining this now he's already said this once just a couple verses back he says now it is no more i that do it but sin that dwells in me uh he's trying to he's been identifying in detail what it is you know uh that is in my flesh there there is dwells no good thing that's total depravity we've been talking about it's no more i that do it but sin that dwells in me that's always the great answer for the Christian that doesn't understand why do I fail? Why can't I live a life of complete sinless perfection? Because you live in a fallen body and it's appointed for everyone to die once. And in that body, is it's sinful. Now you've been given by faith, you've been given the body of Christ. Uh, but it takes faith believing that, that God has crucified the old man, which you cannot see with your natural eyes. It takes faith to believe that he's placed you into Christ, which is a sinless body. And uh, But that was a great answer for me in not understanding why do I fail? Why do I mess up? 
he says it. It's no more I, meaning I don't have the intention of doing this. I don't desire to practice it. Uh, my desire is to live for God and to live holy is what he's saying. But it's sin that dwells in me. He's identified it. It's the sin nature that dwells in me. So he's, he's narrowed it down to it's, it's this, and he's pinpointed mm. it. It's this right here that it, causes me to do it. It really goes back to Romans 5, 20 and 21 here is a good reference because what Paul's teaching us here is he's saying that the sin nature is stronger. Yeah. It's stronger. It overrides his will. His willpower. His willpower. You it's can't, excellent. You can't. What he said. You can't over. You, you're not going to ever be able to overcome stronger. sin on yourself. And this is why we're so hard on psychology. This is why we're so hard on false doctrine. Because most of the church is still teaching today that you can do it. Just discover the champion in you. Just be a good Christian. And, and you can be good to your wife just by the, the efforts of human flesh. And there's no denial of self there. And see, the denial of self, that's really the distinguishing mark of a, of a true Christian. Let me just say it that way. The denial of self is the distinguishing mark of a true Christian, somebody that knows and understands that they don't have the power to overcome the Adamic nature. The Adamic nature is another word for the sin nature. It's another use of terminology there. It's stronger. It can override you. You, you won't ever be able to overcome it by the efforts of flesh. There's something that comes to mind, and it's a song that I love and, you know, have heard it and we've loved it, but it's inaccurate. I'm taking back everything that the devil has stolen from me. Just things like that don't speak of depravity. Um, not that everything has to, but it sounds like he's going to walk in and he's gonna, we're going to take back everything that the devil has stolen like we are some match for him. It is when you said a minute ago that it shows uh, which law is more powerful, that the law of the mind is not more powerful than the law of sin and death. Um, we covered some of that yesterday, but it's important for us to realize that because other, you know, so many people get caught up in super spiritualism and spiritual warfare and trying to battle the devil on themselves on their, on their own. If we could do it, Christ didn't need to go to the cross. We don't have that kind of power. That's why he, he went away that we couldn't go. Amen. Right. That's right. Um, <clears throat> and when he went away, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I, I will, will come, come unto to you, you again. Through the Holy Spirit. Through the Amen. power of the Holy Spirit. But we as believers got to understand God's Holy Spirit power in our lives doesn't just come it has to be accessed by faith in the right thing. There you have it. It just doesn't That's come. The Listen, understand, ladies and gentlemen, that we have got to keep our faith in Calvary, and that's the only thing that will release the power and help of the Holy Spirit. Um, I think all of us probably remember when we first got saved. We were up on a mountaintop experience there for a while, oh, yeah. and then God began to test our faith. The blocks began to be cut out from under us, and then you found yourself messed up again. You, you found yourself <laughs> running for cover, so to speak. And uh, you... <laughs> and needing the Lord. You Needing the Lord's help. And, and you didn't understand why you were failing. You didn't understand why all these things were happening in your life. Well, they're happening in your life because God is trying to bring you and bring us all and teach us to rely completely and wholly and solely upon him that's what his he desires to do in all of our lives is for us he's wanting to train us to trust in him that's right you know what god heather the mo the most thing that the word that god has always spoken to me you know i hear all these char <coughs> charismatic foolishness going on in the church today god gave me a dream every other day God gave me a dream last night. God gave me a dream uh, last week. And God gave me this. God gave me that. Listen, I don't believe all that. God doesn't speak to us that much. Go read your Old Testament. Right. He didn't speak that much. But when he does speak, ladies and gentlemen, he will speak the word of the cross. You heard that here. He'll speak the word of the cross when he speaks. It'll all be lining up with the word of God. If it doesn't, it's not of God. But one thing the Lord has always told me 
personally in my life that he's always spoke to me it was just these these little words right here trust, trust me. me he's always said trust me and see that's what we need to do is we need to trust God and quit trusting in self because Amen. it's self that is going to cause the problem not sometimes every time. but every single time we fail well praise the Lord this has been a great study this morning I hope we've helped somebody and I hope we have encouraged you uh, to not trust in self. Praise the Lord. <laughs> because we want you to have the victory. We Amen. want you to be encouraged and strengthened and edified in the Lord. That way the sin nature will not dominate you. Let me tell you something. I know what a miserable Christian experience it can be when you're trusting in self. And when you are trying to please God by the efforts of flesh. Right. It's miserable. You're, you're putting yourself under the curse of the law when doing that uh ladies and gentlemen stay tuned got a couple announcements before we quit here we want to mention uh the the new study guy will be ready hopefully today or tomorrow and um heather's going to try to get the the link up for it on the website i think today uh so we can uh you can go online and you can purchase that it's going to be in print this week and um i believe that um it's going to be a great blessing for you to understand total depravity each and every one of us need to understand total depravity and um so it's going to be a great so that's going to be out very very soon um as well we have our other study guides our meetings coming up in lima ohio remember those we're going to be with pastor joe compton of the full gospel temple, temple of love Bible. church yes and um if you live anywhere in the lima ohio area you can either contact here uh, us at the ministry and we would we can give you an address or get you in touch with uh, pastor joe there and um, we just want you to be a part of these meetings ladies and gentlemen it's going to be a great great time in the lord as well we want to uh invite you to come on out to crossline ministries tonight <clears throat> we're going to be doing and continuing our bible study in the book of first uh, excuse me in the book of john i believe we're going to begin in chapter two tonight and we are going to be dealing with the first miracle of jesus and boy i tell you there's some golden nuggets hidden there encourage you to come on out and be a part of that as well don't stay home amen don't stay home come and be a part of what god is doing amen, amen. praise the lord well ladies and gentlemen uh pastor curtis hutchinson will be preaching the cross here in just a few minutes and i'm going to uh set ctn uh to a new playlist to where pastor curtis is going to be preaching the cross here so stay tuned as well there we love each and every one of you god richly bless you have a blessed day in the lord bye-bye